डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी हेलो स्टूडेंट्स नमस्कार वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग वेरी गुड आफ्टर नून वेरी गुड इवनिंग आई डोंट हैव एनी आइडिया एट व्हाट टाइम यू आर गोइंग टू सी दिस वीडियो दैट इज व्हाई आई हैव एड्रेस्ड विथ यू ऑल द ग्रेटिंग्स टुडे आई वेलकम यू फ्रॉम द चैतन्य स्टूडियो ऑफ डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी अहमदाबाद वी आर गोइंग टू डील विथ one of the important topics in your paper related with research methods bba r 401 research is very important for any organization it is also useful and important for academic institutes for technological institutes for corporate world for pharmaceutical industries everywhere research is very important and that is why students you must know what is research so in this particular lecture we are going to deal with some of the basics you can say foundation the primary things related with the research so let us see what are the objectives of this topic or methodology you know it very well that here we deal with learning objectives that what are the learning objectives the learning objectives are to add knowledge about the foundations of research yes this is one of the important objectives that what is research if you know the foundation if you know the basics you will be in a position to deal with the topic to deal with the research practically in a better way the second objective understand about the various tools of science research is a science and what are the tools what are the instruments which can be used for research third to know about the concepts of social reality society and research they are closely related and whatever research you do students will help to the society in general fourth objective is to understand about the present status of scientific methods as i told you few minutes before that methodology that means research is purely a scientific thing and when it is a scientific thing you must know what are the scientific methods also and to attain a detailed knowledge about research primary things then we are going at an advanced level so gradually we start with the foundation then we reach at a level where you can contribute something in research what is research or introduction so research is an essential and powerful tool in leading man towards progress without systematic research there would have been very little progress scientific research leads to progress in some field of life so two important words in the first paragraph research powerful and progress so that means it is a powerful tool for what for progress in which field almost in the all fields of the society so that is why we have written here that research is an essential and powerful tool it is essential it is mandatory it is compulsory and at the same time 
it is a very very powerful tool which leads man society towards the progress and if this progress is to be achieved up to the mark of a qualitative level then we need to follow a systematic research and in an organized form in a scientific form then and then our progress would be as per our expectations and this scientific research does not help only in one particular field but in almost all the fields of the society new products new facts new concepts and new ways of doing things are being found due to ever increasing significant research in the physical the biological the sociological and the psychological fields research today is no longer confined to the science laboratory only new field new products new services new inventions students have you ever try to know how new products are invented how new theory is developed how new medicine is developed during the last two years you would have observed that india has achieved a great success in the field of medicine by developing vaccines for covid 19 disease now definitely it was a new concept it required a new theory it was a new invention how it has been materialized how it has been converted into reality through research number of people number of scientists number of doctors number of people who are involved in pharmaceuticals in industry they were working on it and then they have reached up to this level any new product new toothpaste new toothbrush new mobile phone new television everything is possible because of the research so that means anything that is new in the market basically because of the research of so many years sometime it takes one year two years three years five years so research is a systematic scientific thing for innovating new ideas new products new services for doing some work if somebody ask you then what is the meaning of the research students then you must know the root word you know the word research now this word is comprised of two words re plus search now students re means something it is happening again and again so it is a combination of two re plus search now what is the meaning of the re i told you happening again and again and search it is somewhere there in this world in this cosmic world and we try to find out so that is why you can see it means to search again so research means a systematic investigation or activity to gain new knowledge of the already existing facts so we understand one more thing that it is an investigation but what type of investigation a systematic investigation it is also an activity what type of activity systematic activity but what is the purpose of that activity to gain new knowledge this new knowledge which is not known to us and when we come to know it becomes new but it is already there somewhere in this world and research people research scholars try to find out research also is considered as an intellectual activity and when you say intellectual activity 
it requires lot of analytical power it requires lot of brain power it requires lot of involvement of the mind so that is why we say it is an intellectual activity it is responsible for bringing light to new knowledge it is also responsible instrumental for correcting the present mistakes removing existing misconceptions and adding new learning to the existing fund of knowledge there are three things there are certain misconceptions in our mind they are to be removed they are to be eradicated and it is possible only when research finds out some new knowledge that we apply that new knowledge and then we come to know that for so many years we were we are following the wrong pattern we were following the wrong tradition so these misconceptions can be removed by this new knowledge they also help us in correcting the present mistakes if we are doing some mistakes some technical errors some scientific errors some psychological things which can be removed by new knowledge research is also considered as the application of scientific method in solving problems this is a very important thing where you have to apply knowledge there was a time when knowledge was given lot of importance now this is the time where you have to apply that knowledge in day to day affairs so that means application of knowledge is very important so that is why we have written here that research is also considered as the application of scientific method in solving the problems it is a systematic formal and intensive process of carrying on the scientific method of analysis so that means three words we have come to know now that research is a systematic systematic that means something that takes place in an organized form something that is happening scientifically something that takes place by following particular rules and regulations so it is a systematic second it is a formal formal that means it follows rules and regulations it is done it takes place in a particular setup in a particular environment and it is an intensive process when i say intensive that means you have to take care of all the elements you have to take deep interest in it you have to involve yourselves in this process for what what is the purpose of this intensive process carrying on the scientific method and you have to develop the art of analyzing the thing also we are going to discuss all this thing in detail so it is systematic it is formal and it is an intensive process in this intensive process in the whole process of research the most important thing students is assumption now what do you mean by assumption if there is no assumption no research is possible so we need to assume but let us try to understand theoretically first what is assumption then we will take some practical examples to understand the concept more an assumption is something that you assume to be the case without a clear proof what does it mean suppose we are somewhere and if we try to see outside the window and if we see there is darkness outside there is minimum noise there is a silence outside so we can assume that there is a night time now 
Now this is assumption. We don't have any proof, but it is an assumption. Now on the basis of this assumption, we go ahead. So this is the first thing that an assumption is something that you assume to be the case without a clear proof. Scientists make assumptions about their experimental results, theories and laws. Common people have different kind of assumptions. Scientists have different kind of assumptions. Their assumptions are related with some experiments, the results of that experiment. They believe that if they do this thing, this would be the outcome. If I boil this water up to this level, this could be the results. Then they experiment one times, two times, three times, four times, then they reach to the conclusion. So this is called experimental results, theories or any law. Assumptions or working hypothesis are most important part of science. Science of what? Science of research. Right now we are focusing on research. A new word students for you now. From assumptions, we are going to hypothesis. Assumption is a word which is used by common people. It is used in a common parlance. But when any research scholar is interested in mentioning the word assumption, then he or she, the scholar, would use the word hypothesis. So we can say, Assumption is a common term, hypothesis is a technical term. Third, assumption provides a basis to develop theories and research instrument and therefore influence the development and implement of research process. What is the meaning of this line? Assumption provides some kind of basis for our research. There should be some kind of assumption in your mind. Then and then you can go ahead about the research. Anything should come in your mind. If, my, if I am not getting incoming calls on my mobile phone, so there should be some kind of assumption. There could be a network problem. This is one assumption. Second assumption, there could be something wrong with my mobile phone. This is second assumption. Third assumption, my mobile phone is switched off. Maybe a fourth assumption, my mobile phone is still on DND mode, on a silent mode. Or there is something else. That mobile phone is there, incoming fall is there, but I am not in a position to listen. That means there is something wrong with my hearing system. So these all are assumptions. Now I am going to judge, I am going to or I am trying to find out where the problem lies. And for that, I have to analyze the situation. This is also called research. The uses of this assumption as I told you in research. Research is built upon assumptions since a foundation is needed to move forward. We have to go ahead and for going ahead, we need to have some kind of assumption. One must assume something to discover something. A very important line. One must assume something to discover something. If you wish to find out something, for that you need to assume something. That if it is this, then there is a possibility of this. But you have to start with something. So this is called, one must assume something to discover something. Assumptions 
listed in research paper may be good sources of the research topics. So many scientists, so many scholars, so many professors, so many businessmen, they present, they prepare research papers. And these research papers creating opportunities for the scientists, for the research scholars to go ahead for further study in it. So, research papers also create an opportunity. Tested assumptions through research study expand the professional body of knowledge. Now, there is an assumption. This assumption is to be tested, is to be experimented. We need to find out whether this assumption is correct or not. The assumption that I have made, I should try to find out the trustworthiness, the facts, the outcome, the result. And for that, I need to rely on my research. So, research depends or starts with assumption. If there is assumption, then there is a possibility of research. Now, once there is an assumption, you should try to examine it. You should try to test it. You have to validate it that up to what level this is possible. Make number of experiments and you will get the results. And for experimenting it, for testing it, we have various tools, various patterns for research, for analyzing, for observing. And for that, the first tool of research of scientific research, of systematic research is observation. You observe what is happening, constantly make observation that how many times this thing happen. When you press this button, how many times it happens. When you speak loudly, how many times your throat gets affected. When you eat this much, how many times it happens? That means called observation. What is observation? Observation is more than simply noticing something. Constantly you notice. Scientific observation is the central element of scientific method or process. The core skill of scientists is to make observation. Observation is the act of thoroughly viewing another's interaction with his or her surroundings. Make observation. What is going on? Keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. Keep your mind open. Make a note of it. All the data is to be observed. And for this, we say these observations are of two types. One, field observation and second, laboratory observation. Field observation that means, this happens when a researcher carefully observes the nodes of a participants in the natural setting without interference. If I want to study that how many students are interested in learning a particular subject in the classroom, then I will not ask anything, any question. Just I will sit in a corner, I will not disturb any student, just I will go on observing what are the reactions of the students, how many students ask the question, how many times students interact with the teacher. This is called field observation that you find out a setup. In that setup, you do not create any disturbance, just you observe. You allow things to happen, you observe them, you just jot down the reactions. So, this is called field observation. But second is laboratory observation. A laboratory observation is when a research creates 
are precipitating concepts and observe the ensuring behaviors in a natural environment. It means you create an environment, you bring 5 students in the classroom or 10 students in the classroom. You tell them in advance that these elements are to be observed. Then you see the reactions of the students. This is also called laboratory observation. In field observation, you do not disturb the environment. You allow things to happen naturally. Then you try to analyze it in your own way. But in a field observation, you create that kind of situation and then you make certain remarks, you make certain observation. So, these are the two main categories of observation, field observation and laboratory observation. Another important tools of research is measurement. What is measurement? Measurement is the process observing and recording the observation that are collected as part of a research effort. First, you have to understand the fundamental ideas involved in measuring. What are you measuring? How you are going to measure? How much time you are going to allot? How many people will be involved? How many things will be involved? How many objects will be involved? All these things are predecided. For doing research, we have different kind of approaches. These are the two main important approaches. One is quantitative approach and another is qualitative approach. We are going to cover these things in detail in another lecture when we talk about what is qualitative and what is quantitative. But you must know right now there are two main approaches of research, quantitative approach and qualitative approach. The quantitative approach involves the collection of quantitative data. That means when you are collecting some data where number is involved, it is called quantitative. But when you are judging, when you are assessing the quality of the people, quality of the object, anything related with the quality when you are doing research work, this is called qualitative approach. So, the qualitative approach uses the method of subjective assessment of opinions, behaviors and attitudes. So, you have to check your progress. Whatever we have studied is covered and students, you must find out the answer. Before we go ahead, I would also like to suggest you that this is a very important book, Research Methodology by C. R. Kothari. So, students, today in this particular lecture, we covered the basic concepts of research. What is research? It is a systematic, formal and intensive process. Number two, before I say thank you, number two, it is related with science. It covers lot of things. There are certain tools which should be used by you in research work. It could be observation, it could be measurement. This research basically have two concepts, one qualitative approach and quantitative approach. You have to involve yourselves in the research work. It would be the greatest contribution of students like you to find out new theory, new concepts, new product, new law for the betterment of the society. So, start thinking, research is important for the progress of any country.
and I am sure that many of you would involve yourselves in the research for society, for nation and for the world. Thank you students. Swadhyaya Paramantapa